Falteroy. This episode of Drawing from the Well sees Mary Bergen and Tony Lanann connect with the William Ford collection. But first, to learn a little bit more about the collection itself, we speak to Nicholas Carlin, former ITMA director, who's currently working alongside Kathleen E. Egerty and Jackie Small in preparing a book based on the Ford manuscripts held in the Royal Irish Academy here in Dublin. This is a box of Irish traditional music, an archival box, and it contains some 1,900 tunes of the 19th century, written down in the 1840s, more than 170 years ago. It's music of the period of the Great Famine. In fact, much of it was collected during the actual years of the famine and from a musician who was dying of malnutrition. It was the largest collection of Irish traditional music made until the 1840s, but it has remained unpublished and largely unknown since then in the library of the Royal Irish Academy here in Dublin. During these recent pandemic months, the Irish Traditional Music Archive has been preparing the manuscript for publication, and it will appear next year in book form and in digitised form. The original of this manuscript was compiled and written by a little known but remarkable figure in Irish music. His name was William Ford and he was born in Cork City in 1797, the year before the rebellion, and he died in London in 1850, aged just 53. He was a professional musician in the classical idiom, a specialist on orchestral flute and piano. About the year 1840, William Ford began to take an interest in Irish traditional music as distinct from classical music. And on his return from London to Cork in that year, he set to compiling what is now the William Ford manuscript of Irish traditional music. He then uh, developed the ambition to publish what he had collected to that date and he produced a prospectus in January of 1845 asking for subscribers, a guinea each, and if he got 250 subscribers he would publish his collection to date. Unfortunately the subscribers never materialised and his collection went unpublished. But he had a turn of good fortune as regards his Irish music collection. He made the acquaintance in 1845 of a man called Patrick McDowell. The major thing that McDowell did for Ford was to finance him to come back to Ireland in 1846, when the famine was raging, on a collecting trip. Ford started in Dublin. He then made his way up through Drogheda and Dundalk and Cavan, collecting as he went, and he came to South Leitrim. In 1847, he began a new writing out his entire collection, and between then and his death in 18, 1850, he had made, he had compiled 422 pages of what is now his chief and main manuscript. And this is the manuscript in the Royal Irish Academy, which ITMA is using as the basis of its edition. Multi-instrumentalist John Blake is currently working on an Arts Council funded project which he introduces leading soloists to tunes from the William Ford collection. Who we firm on Tashkent show Shirgadi Connemara, Conrain Taffa the Ennis, nor if John Blake occur by the William Ford in the old Mary Bergen Agastonian Lana. Sure. Thanks for um, agreeing to do this, first of all. It's, um, it's great to be involved in it, to be honest. Yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting project, right? It's an exciting collection that uh, can't wait to be published. Um, I've been going through it. Uh, I've had a sneak preview for the last uh, couple of months. Um, so these are two tunes that are uh, hot off the press from 200 years ago. Um, okay. uh, the Sprightly Widow and the Basket of Oysters. Um, they're two uh, jigs, um, which are I guess, the most common type of jig in this collection. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, we might give these a go. Uh, I might play it at this party with you for you first, just to give you an idea. Go for it. Okay. <laughs>
go. Okay. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Yeah, we'll certainly give it a shot. Right. Okay. It takes a while to, for a tune to settle into you, like yeah. you know, it's, yeah. you're, you could play a tune for a while, but it's not part of you for, for a while, for yeah. a good while, yeah. you know. like but, would you feel the same yeah. you have to uh, like with, the any, with any tune that's, yeah. 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 And some, they could hit you within five minutes and some take a hundred plays around to actually yeah. get exactly, to, to yeah. Them, yeah. And also, as Tony says, that you, you, when you like the tune, like, it, it, it's always easier to learn the tune. Way, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you were saying that a lot of the tunes were, um, they were actually written in, in different keys or keys that we wouldn't normally play. In. Yeah, uh, a lot of it's in, uh, I guess, between F, B flat, E flat, C, I suppose, is actually the most common key. But uh, right. yeah, tricky, tricky enough. Keys. And he, he was, he was a, a classical player as well, was he? Um, yeah, he was a classical flautist uh, and a music collector, uh, scholar. So, um, uh, yeah, he's keen so he to yeah. know his music. It'd be interesting to, to know what, where the tunes played in that key, like would he have got them from old pipers or something like I that? Know, yeah. I mean, there is reference to, um, there's a lot of Paddy Keneally tunes in there, you know, so uh, Paddy Keneally would have uh, certainly been playing flat. Flat, yeah. yeah so. But F, like, they wouldn't have been playing F. Or F, F if, if well, maybe, maybe the C set would be yeah, tune, okay, playing yeah. tune fingering. Or else end. some of the... the, the um, the flutes might have been. Uh, the F it could have been lower down. Yeah, well, you could have even higher up. Higher, ones, higher so F, like the five the kind of yeah. five feet kind of flutes. Five and drum band tunes. Yeah. There's a lot of marches in there, so that could be, you know. Wow. Okay. Another.